Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. I am Samarth and in this video we are going to learn something new about Flutter. In this video we are going to learn how we can use Firebase's Cloud Firestore with Flutter and we'll also learn how we can create list detail pages inside our applications. So we'll be creating a list page that will display a list of data that we'll be retrieving from Cloud Firestore and when the user taps or selects any item inside that list we'll be displaying more information about that item on a detail page. So we'll be sending in data from one page to another. And all this data will be coming to us from Cloud Firestore. So here you can see that I have a blank application. I have gotten rid of all the comments that come when we create a new project in Flutter. And also I have gotten rid of some of the boilerplate code in this project. So inside the build function, I'm just returning in scaffold and the body of scaffold contains just a blank container. So now that we are ready to start, the first step would be to create a new Firebase project and integrate our Flutter application with it. So head over to Firebase console and if you haven't, create a new Firebase project. Go to your Firebase database section and from here you can activate Cloud Firestore. I already have some data inside this database and if you have a look at the post collection, you can see that I have a number of documents. Each of these documents contain a number of fields like title, owner, created and content. So in our list page, we'll be displaying just the title and when the user taps on an item in the list, we'll be displaying more information from this document on the detail page, including the content. So let's head over to our project overview page and here click on add app. Since I'm just targeting iOS for now, I'll be selecting iOS. And the first step would be to enter the project bundle ID. And I'll leave everything blank. Click on register app. And this will give you a file that you need to download and put into your project. So I'll just go ahead and download Google service info.plist file. And you need to put this file inside a very specific location in your project. For iOS, you need to put this file inside the runner folder in your iOS folder within your project and for Android you need to put it in your app folder which is inside your Android folder. Let's save the file and we are done with Firebase console. So now we can go back to our Flutter project and verify that we have the file in the proper location. So if you look inside the iOS folder, the runner folder, you can see that I have the Google service info.plist file right here. Now we need to add a dependency to use Cloud Firestore inside our project. And for that, we need to open this file pubspec.yaml. In this file, we need to add the dependency, which is Cloud Firestore. If you are not sure about which version to download, just search for Flutter Firestore and you will be taken to a link on pub.dartlang.org. And here you can look at the documentation as of now, the latest version of Dart SDK is 0.8.1. So that's what I'll add to my list of dependencies. I'll save that, click on packages get and it will get the latest version of Cloud Firestore dependency and install it in your project. Now we are ready to use Cloud Firestore. So now in your project, if you go ahead and type in Firestore, you can see that you can add this import Cloud Firestore slash Cloud Firestore dot Dart. At this point, you might want to stop your application and rebuild it all over again. This is required because you have just installed a new dependency. So while our application is built, let's go ahead and create a new stateful widget and call it the list page. For now, I'm just going to do everything in one file, but you should always break down your code in multiple files. So I'm just going to create a new stateful widget and call it list page. I'll also create another widget and this will be called as the detail page. So now I have two widgets. Basically these will act as our pages. The list page will be the one that will be displayed when our application loads up. And when the user taps on any item inside this list page, the detail page will load up. So in my scaffold, I'll just go ahead and add the list page as the body of the scaffold. Now we can work inside our list page so now all I need to do is create a list inside the build function of our list page state class. So 
inside this container, I'll just go ahead and create a future builder and I'm creating a future builder because we'll be creating a future that will be getting the data from Cloud Firestore and future builder is the best widget to use with futures. It takes a builder and the builder is generally a function which takes in two parameters. The first one is the build context and the second one is the async snapshot. In here, you have to perform some checks because if you try to render data that is not yet available, you might run into errors. So here you will perform a check if the connection is still in the waiting state or it has completed. So I'll just go ahead and type in if snapshot.connectionState is connectionState.waiting which means that we still haven't yet got the response from Cloud Firestore. In that case, we just want to return a center widget with the child as a text widget that will display the text loading as we will render our list. To create our list, we'll be needing some data and we'll get that data from the future that we still haven't yet defined. So let's go ahead and create that future function first. So we'll be creating a future and let's call this function as get posts. And to use a future, you need to import the library async, which is built into Dart. Now in here, the first thing you need to do is instantiate your Cloud Firestore first. So all you need to do is type in where Firestore is equals to Firestore.instance. This will give you an instance of the Firestore class. On this, you can execute various functions. So I'm just going to type in Firestore.collection and this function takes in the name of the collection that I want to access. For me, the name of the collection is posts and from this posts collection, I'll get all the documents. So I'll use the function get documents. So I'll just create a new variable of query snapshot type and let's call it QN and I'll await the get documents operation. Since the get documents operation also returns a future, you have to type in await if you want to get the data that it returns. To use await inside this function, you will have to mark this get post function as async. And you can see that the errors went away. Now that you have got the query snapshot, you can return all the documents. So I'm just going to type in return qn dot documents. And this returns all the documents, which is essentially an array of document snapshots for all the documents that are there inside the post collection. So our future is done. Now we need to tell our future builder to use this future. So I'll just add a future property to our future builder and pass in the name of our future, which is get posts. Now inside our else block, we'll be creating a list using the data that we are getting inside our snapshot. So I'll be using a list view builder and the list view builder also takes in a property called item builder, which takes in a function that builds our list. The item builder function takes in the build context and an index. Along with the item builder property for our builder, we'll also pass in a property called item count. And for item count, we need to pass in the number of items that this list is going to have. For us, we can simply get the number of items using snapshot.data.length, which is actually the length of the documents array that we are returning from our future. Snapshot.data contains anything that you return from your future. Since we are returning, query snapshot.documents array, that's what we are getting inside our snapshot.data property. We are going to use the similar concept to build our list using the list view builder. From inside of our item builder, I'm going to return a list style and the list style has a property called title, which will contain a text widget. And for the text, I'm going to return the text contained inside the document at index, which is specified by the index variable. And since I'm getting a document snapshot, I can simply use the data property to get all the data. And from this data, I want to access the title property. Let's put in a semicolon and let's try to run this. And you can see that as the application launches on the phone, I get the list and the list contains the titles for all the documents that I have inside the post collection. So now that we have got the list working, now it's time to move on to the next step, which would be to link each item in this list to the detail page. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing would be to configure our detail page to receive a parameter. And we need to make a decision here. What parameters should the detail page be receiving? 
for me i'm going to receive a whole document snapshot as a parameter so in my detail page class i'll be writing the code to receive a parameter so i'll be creating an object of type final and this object will be of the type document snapshot and let's call it post i'll initialize the value of this post variable using the constructor so i'll just create a new constructor and in the constructor i'll just pass in this dot post and now our detail page is ready to receive a post object which is of the type document snapshot as a parameter now we can use this post object inside the build function of detail page state class and let's make a card the child of this container and inside this card i'll again create a list style i'm using list styles because list styles are easy to use and they look nice i'll use the title property and i'll display the same title that i displayed in our list i can just go ahead and type in widget dot post dot data which will give me all the data inside that document as json and from this data object i want to extract the title property this will give me the title along with the title i'll also pass in a text widget to the subtitle property so now we have our detail page ready as well now all we need to do is create a link so that when the user taps on any item inside our list the detail page is loaded the list style inside our list has a property called on tap and the on tap property takes in a function that is executed when the user taps on a list style we are going to use this function to navigate the user to the detail page we'll be creating a new function and to this function we'll be passing in the document snapshot as a parameter so i'll just pass in the whole document snapshot which i can access using snapshot.data at index now i need to create this function navigate to detail so i'll just create this function just after my future and the job of this function is to navigate the user to the detail page and also pass in the post parameter to that page so we can use navigator for that and i'll use navigator dot push the push function takes in two parameters the build context and the second parameter needs to be a route and for the route we'll be creating a new material page route which takes in a builder and the builder again takes in a function and from this function i'm just going to return the detail page and i'll also pass in the post object to the detail page this post object that i have passed in as a parameter to the detail page will be received by the constructor inside our detail page and then it will be available to the detail page state because we are using widget.post let's save that and now if i try and tap on any of the list item inside this list you can see that i'm taken to another page and here i can see the title and the content as well since we don't have a scaffold on the detail page we are just getting to see this container and therefore we don't have an app bar let's go ahead and wrap this container inside another widget and i'll also create an app bar and the title on this scaffold is going to be the text widget which will again display the same title from our json object so now you can see that i am getting this nice app bar and it also displays the title from the document snapshot if you go back and if you click on any other item in the list you can see that you get appropriate data on the detail page one problem with using future builder is that whenever you navigate back to this page you can see that the future builder is being executed every time and to prevent that what you can do is instead of passing in your future directly to your future builder you can obtain your future in advance and to do that you can use the init state function and the init state function is executed whenever your state or your page loads up for the very first time so inside this function we can obtain our future in advance so we'll have to create a variable of type future first and let's call this as data and inside our int state we'll initialize the value of data with the get posts function so now instead of calling in the get post function every time the future can simply use the data that is available inside the data object which is also a future so now our future will not be called every time you navigate to and fro inside your application or every time 
when your build function is executed because ideally whenever the build function is called your future builder is also re-rendered and therefore your future is also executed again and again and a lot of people think that this is a flaw in future builder but it's not this is how future builder is supposed to work so if you want that your future should not be called over and over again and exhaust the limit of your server you can obtain your future in advance just like this and your application will work just as it was working before so now if i click on any item in the list you can see that the detail page shows all the information about that particular list item you can expand this concept and use it in your applications so i hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions or queries feel free to post them in the comment section below thanks for watching